Now this third technique is called wet and wet. That's where you have to take uh, both colors that you're mixing or both areas that you're mixing. The paint has to be wet, hence the term wet and wet. It uh, looks a little bit different. Um, people like the look of it a little bit more than the whole dry brush approach. Um, it's just a little trickier because you have to work quickly um, because uh, you need those and you have to apply the paint a little bit thicker so that it stays uh, moist longer so you can get that uh, those colors to blend as you want them. Now the problem sometimes with um, the lighter colors, this is covering pretty good over the dark because I'm applying it pretty thick. Um, and I'm even putting another layer on top. I have one circle that I already painted that I let dry and now I'm going to paint this one fully wet and wet is that sometimes those lighter colors, well, all the colors can be kind of transparent. So if you want it to be opaque in the end, sometimes you might have to do a layer first, let it dry, and then do another layer over top. I was hoping to kind of demonstrate uh, the transparency of this, but it, it actually ended up covering pretty good. And now I'm just going to take a little blue. I'm going to do some modeling here, some shading. I'm just going to take some blue and I'm going to blend it into this orange, and what you're going to see is as I blend it in more and more, it's going to turn kind of brownish. So now what I do is I applied that in this area, blended it in a little bit, and now I'm going to work my way across. And notice how I keep going from one area into the other. I keep working along that leading edge, letting it fade out. I don't want to go back into this area now because I've taken this lighter color paint and, and then I'll put it back in here. In fact, I'll show you what happened. So I ended up, my brush ended up out here with the lightest color on it. If I go back into this, see, it kind of erases that. Which sometimes, if you want to lighten that up, that's fine. But then I kind of work my, you kind of have to work your way across getting that to fade out. And that's how you blend in using um, the wet and wet technique. Now I can get rid of, I want to go back in while it's still wet and I want to darken this a little bit. I can grab a little bit more of my darker color. So you notice I, I got rid of the excess paint that I have. I mean, I could wash it off in my water, but I wanted to keep it dry because I don't want to add water because water will sort of dilute the color. <clears throat> so I want it thick and kind of dryish. So I'll go back in here. And I'm just going to drop in some of this blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the excess blue because I don't want any more. And I just want to take that color and start spreading it around. So I spread it around this way. And then I work that leading edge. And I work my way kind of like a little X pattern sort of. And you have to be careful with some of these brushes. They're kind of rough. If you push down too hard, you're going to erase the paint. So I'm just kind of skimming over the surface, letting that sort of, you know, blend in. Okay. And then I can kind of work my way back a little bit too. work my way backwards. You don't want to just jump from here over to here. You want to work your way across and then maybe work your way back. So I can kind of work back. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking this lighter paint and I'm working it back into the darker area and lightening that up a little bit and spreading it around. So that's kind of the key work in wet and wet is you have to work from one area back into the other and then work back, you know, again. And you, there's a short window of opportunity where this works. It works perfectly when the paint really starts to dry a little bit and gets just that little sticky, but you really got to work quickly to do it. Some people love the look of it. Um, if you can develop it, great, but a lot of times with our time constraints, it always doesn't work real well. But if you can get good at it, some people really like that smoother, softer look um, over, you know, using the whole dry brush approach. So give it a shot if you want. Um, you just have to be really prepared, but that's how you do the wet and wet technique.